What's up guys, it's Ryan here of Ryan Edda Photography and today is Teach Tuesday so we have a great tutorial for you guys but before we get to it please make sure to hit the like button subscribe to our channel share the video leave a comment all that good stuff so today I'm going to talk about adding motion blur or a blur effect to your images in Photoshop so we're using Photoshop CC 2020 and I'm gonna show you how I use it in order to clean up images so that's kind of um, before I get into it that that, that a certain effect right I'm using it just to remove distractions in the images so Sometimes you don't have a lot of time, especially in wedding photography. If you guys are, you know, active studios shooting weddings, you know how fast things like go, especially when, you know, when you're dealing with clients. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have the time, the, the luxury of time sometimes. Some, sometimes it happens, but most of the time it doesn't. So you just have to be quick on your feet and you have to visualize your shot and you know what you can do in post. So sometimes, as I mentioned before, photography is problem solving. Sometimes you just have to solve some problems. So when you have an image that you want, that you deem has a lot of potential, knowing these techniques can really take that image where you want to, to uh, where you want to take it so <laughs> all right so let's let's get started so I'm going to open Photoshop and share share my screen here we go so right now I have this base image so this is the image that we're gonna work with I actually had a previous video about this one moreover what what everything that I did to it but right now we're just focusing on how to use blur so as you can see in this image there's plenty of distractions like there's so I mean it's you know it's a gorgeous shot you have the City Hall Philadelphia and we we brought in all these design into the middle of the street and we have our beautiful, gorgeous uh, subject here. And so going through these steps, what I did is I cleaned up the image. I cloned out, like you could use the cloning tool or cloning stamp, clone stamp tool or the healing brush, like these guys over here to clean up the image. So that's that layer. and. So I kind of repaired that side, like over here, if you see it, on the right side of the screen, like here, is that this layer here. And then we progress to the, well, it says don't use, so I don't know, I'm not gonna turn that on. So this one says curves. So this is just a dodge and burn using the curves layer. And now here we go. So what I did in this first layer, if we look at this layer only, so you could already see that's a blur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, this is probably, this is what I did and I just removed it because I didn't need it anymore. So if you go on Mac, Shift, Option, shift option command e so that creates a stamp visible layer so you see it it got created over here i think on pc it's control alt sh shift e and so this creates a a topmost layer out of everything that it sees below right and so to create this this initial blur i i blurred this right side right so how I did that 
So I use the lasso tool. So you hit L, command, or go up here, lasso. And then you draw on the things that you want the blur effect to have um, to be applied on. So these cars were not moving as quick or they were just parked on. Yeah, so it was slow moving traffic. But if they were really, I had some shots that I caught like cars really speeding by, but sometimes since I wasn't using the tripod to layer the shots, it would have been much messier because my hand was like moving also because I was directing the subject. So it's pro it was much efficient to just use one base image and then use the blur effect. So, so, so I select, let's say, yeah, I selected these subjects, right? So I would go control J or com oh, command J, control J on PC. PC. So what that what that does is it takes that selection into its own makes it its own layer because by doing that I can have more control. So so next step I'm going to go filter blur. So there's plenty of blur options depending on what type of um, effect you want to create. So for this one, we'll just do motion blur because we want the mo motion blur. It creates um, an effect that goes from one direction to another, like a like a straight line. So let's see. First step. Okay, here. See, there's a preview, right? Right now, so this circle here is the angle, the direction. So if you want it to go like straight horizontal or like an up and down. So in this case, we want it to angle like, you know, with how the, how the, how the pick the images. So it's kind of like in a little bit diagonal, it's the street. It's like converging to the center. So that's the angle. And then the distance is how much blur you want to put in so the higher the number see that so if I go minimize it it's not much and then it just increases as you increase the number right so maybe I'll do like a little bit this way and then I hit OK and it, and it gets applied right and so see there's a little bit of um it's not like perfect up here so what you do is you add a layer mask click this thing and then you go to brush and make sure you have black on your foreground color and then you can brush you can brush away on those edges that are not as clean Make sure up here you have enough flow and opacity. And to really, and then let's say you want a little bit more, you could actually do a free transform. So Control T or Command T will reveal these handles here. And then you can hold Shift and just drag it. Holding Shift doesn't mean, would just mean if I drag it up and down, it's not going to get distorted only gonna go like horizontal not vertical see it's not doing anything Just stretch it out more right that's an extra thing you can do then you would just have to brush some of this back up here see see now now you kind of remove the distraction of the cars so that's that's what happened here, and then I did it. So I did another one small one here, but this time I, I dragged it all the I stretched it and see that where it's all stretched out. 
it got in the middle. So that's how the blur was applied to that image. And from then on, you can move on to the next phases of your editing, like your finishing touches. All right, so that's our Teach Tuesdays quick lesson for today. It's up to you how you want to use it creatively. You could use it for, let's say you have a subject, like a couple standing and there's people walking around. You didn't got enough blur from like using a sh shallow shutter speed because the lower your shutter, the more susceptible you are from handshake, handshake and, um, and your subjects might not be that, that sharp. So sometimes it happens. So just know you could exaggerate those effects in Photoshop and execute your vision. So, I mean, if this style is not for, for you, it might not be for everyone, but that's how I make the most of the resources that I got. So I know everyone has their different styles, but if this is something that can help you in the future or apply or, you know, something new to learn. So definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more. Leave a comment and share the video, all that good stuff. And I'll talk to you soon. This is Ryan of Ryan Edit Photography. Be healthy, stay safe, and peace out. Ciao.